Hey everybody, my name is Dan Stewart and today I have Melissa McCone joining me for our very first episode of Hi. What to Say Now. Welcome everyone and hi Melissa. How are you today? Hi Dan. Happy birthday. It looks festive behind you. Hey, there you are. Yeah, well today is uh, <laughs> today is a day I've turned five. I'm five years old today. That's pretty exciting stuff. So yeah. Um, you know, Melissa, first, I want to say thank you for, uh, for joining me today. This is a special day and not just because it's my birthday. Uh, it's a special day because we are going to start a project today that could be very transformative for you and a lot of people who are choosing to, uh, choosing to listen to this broadcast. So once a week, every week on Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, we're going to go live and we're going to be discussing what to say now. Okay. Now, this is really critical because uh, have you ever, for example, wondered why it is that your prospects treat you like a salesperson instead of simply a person? It turns out that decades of running scripts on people, decades of learning to be a master manipulator instead of a master servant have cost those of us in the sales profession a very great deal. So uh, today what we're going to do is start an ongoing conversation that's going to help you break through all that clutter. It's going to help you get to the heart of what it is that people really want. And so you can deliver your message more effectively to them, which helps them first and helps you second. You see, I think a huge problem that many salespeople have is they get so focused on needing to hit a goal for their own income. They want, they want, they want. And the problem is they're not putting their customer first, right? Because the way to really grow a tremendous business, the way to really have a happy life is to serve other people first and then to be uh, blessed with everything that comes after that. If you only focus on providing enough value for people, they will find a way to bring prosperity to you, I promise you. So uh, once a week, every week on Monday at 2 p.m., we're going to be answering these questions about what to say now. And your job, quite simply, is to join our Facebook group. Uh, it's called What to Say Now. You can just search for that on Facebook and tell us the things you need help with. Okay? So this could be absolutely any sort of communication issue that you have. If it's communicating to your employees, to recruits, to prospects, to people you've been nurturing in your database forever that you can't seem to get to respond. If it's even just how to figure out how to put your database together in the first place, those are all things that we can help you with. And uh, by the way, I'll give you a little bit of a background and introduction for myself. Um, Happy Grasshopper is my seventh company. I'm a serial entrepreneur. Happy Grasshopper is nearly 10 years old. And over this time, we've helped thousands and thousands of sales professionals figure out how to communicate with their database in a way that allows them to attract more business in a very effortless way. So uh, right from the start, we've said we're the easiest way to keep in touch. And today, we're going a step further by teaching you exactly what to say. So, Melissa... How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm really excited about this it new group like we put together. Good. I think yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun. And... I'm glad that you are. I'm glad that what you are. That? There's like a 30 second lag there a little bit. I thought you were totally frozen. There's a, a big lag right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm really talking excited and about start. it. You know, so it's... I'm going to start on your hook there. <laughs> no, I'm excited yeah, about this. I think there's going to be all, lots Melissa. of good questions, you know, lots of there. different angles. Mm. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so, you're fading out. Um, I'm getting a message right now saying that my internet connection is unstable, which uh, we are currently having a lot of storms in the Tampa Bay area. That might be it. But uh, we're going to soldier on and get through this, right? So... Uh, again, if you're tuning in uh, today for the first time, what you need to know about me is that uh, I'm a person who's created multiple successful companies, and all of it has not been because I'm a great salesperson. It's been because I've been great at helping start conversations that lead to sales opportunities. So the purpose of this whole project is to teach you those very same skills 
And the way that you can get involved is just join our Facebook group on Facebook at What to Say Now. So you can go there and you can ask any sort of question at all. And we're going to take the time every Monday at 2 p.m. to answer those questions live for you like we are today. Now, Melissa, the first question, do you have this one queued up for us? Let's see. I am just looking here. You know, it looks like, oh, I also want to remind people it's Eastern time, 2 p.m. Eastern time on Mondays. <laughs> Being a West Coast girl, I always have to remind myself of the time zones. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm really excited about this group. I mean, like you said, I think people need to just, you know, get on Facebook, join our group, come hang out with us, you know, and like you said, ask any questions. You know, I mean, again, I forget to reach out to people on a regular basis and then I just don't know what to do. <laughs> and I get like nervous or embarrassed by that. And that's really, you know, kind of what I think we need to sort of talk about and overcome and help people to feel comfortable with. That's a really great segue to the first question that we've been asked, which, you know, it comes to us from a person who like a lot of us is probably feeling a little guilty because they haven't reached out to people who are already in their database. You know, as, as sales professionals, it's so easy to be focused on those new leads all the time because, oh, it's new, it's fresh, they're ready to buy, let's hope. We want that to be the case. And yet there's almost always more opportunity for us within the group of people that already know who we are. So sometimes you get so busy with those new leads, you forget to really nurture the relationships that you already have, and it leaves you feeling guilty, right? If, if we have a relationship and I haven't reached out in a long time, I tend to have a feeling like, oh my gosh, I hope they're not mad at me because I haven't reached out. And you know, what's funny is I actually have these feelings, right? As the king of keep me in too. touch, it still happens to me. me. It's easy to get so caught up in the day to day that you sometimes don't reach out to people like you need to, right? So uh, when that happens, when you find yourself in that situation, you need to have some language that's going to reach out to them and not make them feel alienated, right? And, yeah. and whatever that language is, it should never be anything that makes them feel guilty, right? You don't want to try to offload your guilt to them. It should be something that expects a reply. So I'm going to model an example here for you. Let's imagine that Melissa and I have known each other for, let's say, eight, nine, 10 years, because guess what? We've known each other for eight, nine, 10 years, right? <laughs> exactly. and, and during that time, you worked at companies like RE Technology, right? Mm -hmm. You worked at yeah. companies like DocuSign. And yeah. you know, sometimes we'd see each other at conferences on a very regular schedule. And then yeah. sometimes we might go for you know, a year even without seeing each other or without having a conversation. So when that happens, I have a choice that I can make. I can reach out to Melissa in a way that makes her feel as awkward as I do, right? <laughs> or I can just reach out to her and pretend everything's fine, right? So because we know each other, we can assume that we've got familiarity within our relationship. This should not be some sort of formal, um, you know, dear Melissa, <laughs> you know, it should be light. It should be friendly. And it should be the kind of content that makes it easy for her to reply to. So something short like, hey, Melissa was just thinking about you. How have you been? Hey, Melissa, I was just thinking about you. How have you been? Sign Dan, right? If that's an email, could be a text, um, could be a voicemail. I mean, there's all sorts of ways to get that message out there but it feels completely non-threatening. It feels like a human being reaching out to a human being, not like right. a sales professional reaching out to a prospect, okay? Right. So that's the key tip here is if it looks like sales, if it smells at all like sales or marketing, it becomes very safe to ignore. And you yep. can't be safe to ignore if you're gonna build real relationships. Definitely. So, yeah, that's how to handle that one, absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, Next week uh, on Monday at two o'clock, we're going to have a whole bunch of fresh new questions and we're going to answer those for you during a live segment. Now, uh, for those of you who are watching this now, I'm doing something very special tonight at 5 p.m. Eastern when I'll be going live on Facebook with my friend and real estate coach, 
Jared James. So uh, you probably so know Jared James because he's amazing. He has made a huge, huge, huge improvement to the way coaching takes place in the real estate world. And I'm super proud of his progress of as a deal. professional. And I'm very fortunate and grateful to call him my friend. So uh, to join us tonight live at 5 p.m., all you have to do is come to Facebook and go to Jared James Today. That's it. Facebook.com slash Jared James Today at 5 p.m. Jared's going to be putting me in a hot seat so that I can help you guys know what to say now. All right. So, Melissa, can you tell me about a time in your sales career when you struggled to come up with some sort of content? Oh, yeah. I mean, it happens more often than you think. Um, you know, and typically I try to I try to find something that's familiar and I try to remember, you know, something like, are they do they have five kids? Do they have 12 dogs? Do they live on a ranch? I mean, what is that icebreaker going to be? Right. Like make it personal. And so, you know, I want to start with a personable because you and I talk about this all the time. But, you know, people want to do business with people that they like people they trust and people they mm -hmm. think are smart. <laughs> and so, you know, if we just kind of follow that path and keep those relationships close, you know, then I think that that's kind of the first step in moving towards, you know, a sale down the road or making money at some point. So. Well, so for example, uh, in our relationship over the years, like going back to your RE technology days, right. Yeah. Um, you guys were fantastic. We'd write a blog post and you, you would share it. Like it was great for us to have that sense of exposure. And, and I want to bring this up because there's all sorts of things that, that were in alignment with what you're doing then with the things that we're teaching here, right? Because like the concepts of induced reciprocation, you were giving us exposure first yeah. before there was any sort of ask for some kind of financial arrangement between us, right? Exactly. That, that often makes sense, right? There was an establishment of rapport. There was all this time that would go between when we talk or see each other, there'd have to be something to like bring that relationship back into perspective. And, yes. you know, so one of the things that you mentioned, like the name of their dog, right? Or how many kids that they have, something like that. That's great information to store and keep in your CRM and have it there. But a lot of times, you know, you're out and about, like you might go to the grocery store and go, oh my gosh, I know that person, but I can't think of exactly where I knew them, right? Or I know that time. person's name, but oh, I can't remember exactly what that is. Or did they have the dog or was it the, uh, I don't remember for sure, right? That's called real life. And you can't just like pop open your CRM there. So you need to have a strategy to be ready to have those kinds of conversations at a moment's notice. And the strategy that I'm going to share with you for that is called shared observation. So wherever you happen to be, there's something that you both can observe at the same time. And all you have to do is call attention to that thing. It's like right? bread in the bread aisle at the grocery store. Yeah, if you're in the, you know, it could be, hey, I just saw there's there's white bread here that's labeled wheat bread. What's that all about? That's a shared observation. It's something to bring up a conversation about. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. folks, here's what we're going to do. Every single Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, we're going to go live with the exception of this coming Monday. It's Memorial Day, right? So we're going to be off with our families just like hopefully you are. Uh, so we'll be live on Tuesday next week at 2 p.m. Uh, so until then, please get your butts over to our Facebook group. It is uh, what to say now, right? So you just have to go to Facebook and search what to say now. And it's your job to pop the questions you'd like answered in there. Give us as much detail about the communication situation you found yourself in. And we'll read your, uh, your questions. We'll come up with the right answers and we'll share them with you and the rest of the world at 2 p.m. Uh, next week. So have a great day, everybody. And guess what? I'm me. old. Yay. <laughs> Bye now. Bye. Happy birthday, Dan. Thank you, Brian. <laughs>